parents play a huge role in this. I thank God for my parents because I could, I could not be who I am now yeah. without them. That's right. That's right. And Timothy's mother and grandmother were a huge help to him. They were Jewish believers. They had been Jewish and they became Christians. And they raised him up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And because of that, he became a pastor. And he was, um, he was a pastor in one of the wickedest cities and helped to preach the gospel all over the place. And Timothy made a huge difference. The Bible calls us to be an example. It says in 1 Timothy 4, it says, But be thou an example. The definition of example is a model meant for imitation. So you're an example so that other people can imitate you, so that they can see Christ in you and wonder, what is so different? People really do wonder that. Like, I thought people were joking when they said that, you know, Christians would intrigue the minds of the non-saved. No, it's true. Because you'll be living a life that glorifies God, and they'll be wondering, why aren't you having sex before you get married? Why aren't you out drinking and, and going around acting crazy? They'll realize that there's someone on the inside of you that is making you live a certain way, and they'll want that. It says in Ephesians 5 and 1, it says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. So we imitate God, and they imitate us. By imitating us, they realize they should be imitating God. They get saved, and everybody's happy. That's how it works. We point people to God and not us, because we can't save nobody. We can't heal or deliver That's nobody. Right. Right. It's God working through us, or God working by himself. But we're just a part of the equation. God is the major part. I heard this quote. It says that Christians are walking epistles written by God and read by people. So we're like walking books of the Bible. People read our lives. They read what we wear. They read how we carry ourselves, what we say, and how we love one another. And they see God through that. So we can't give them a mixed message. So who are you letting write your life? If you're an epistle, who's writing your life? Is God writing it or is somebody else writing it? Because if somebody else is writing it, you're going to have a mixed message. But if God is writing it, he'll carry you and he'll make you into the person he has called you to be. By following Christ, we teach other people to follow him too. Think about who's reading your life. What people do you come in contact with? With my minor, because of my minor, I come in contact with a whole lot of people who are saved. I come in contact with a lot of um, Arabic people and a lot of Muslims, a ton of Muslims. And they don't understand, you know, who Jesus is. And so it's great because it gives me an opportunity to share that with them. But think about the people in your class. Think about your teachers. I know when I was in high school, like, um, it was so awesome because there were, like, there was a group of Christians who really hung out together. We were all in FCA together. And we were even, you know, even our, we even noticed the difference in our teachers when we were in the room, like how they wouldn't be as vulgar or whatever. So you are making a difference. You are rubbing off on them. The next part that Paul talks about is being an example in word and in conversation. What comes out of your mouth? The Bible says that you can't curse and praise with the same mouth because spring water and fresh water don't come from the same source. So if you're cursing and praising, then something isn't right. Something's confused and that needs to get some help. But it is, it is so important that we watch the way that we speak in front of non-Christians. Right. Don't speak about ungodly things in the, in the midst of, you know, uh, non-believers because it's just going to confuse them. I mean, I'm not saying go around holy, holy, holy all the time, but just watch your speech because they really look for you to fall. They're wondering when is she going to fall. Okay, when I'm going to see it, he's going to trip over that, and I'm going to laugh at him. That's exactly what they, the, a lot of people think like. I know, like, when I was at uh, I'm at work, when I was at work last week, one of my coworkers told me that my boss knows I'm a Christian, and so she told one of my co-workers who's not a Christian, because she's not a Christian either, she said, um, either Caitlin's going to convert you or you're going to corrupt her. <laughs> and I was shocked when she said that. I was mad and confused, like, hold on, she said, what? I couldn't believe that my boss was looking for me to trip up. But that's what, I mean, that's, you know, they're wondering, is this real? It's not that they're trying to make you fall. It's they're wondering if the God you serve is that real. Yeah, yeah. And if he's that real to you. Because when he's real to you, he'll rub off on them. Yeah. And it'll make a huge difference. So anyway, we imitate God and we imitate him in our speech. 
Jesus said that it's not what goes in the mouth, but what comes out. He also said that we'll be held accountable for the words we speak. He puts a huge emphasis on words. And I know we've all said stuff we wish we wouldn't have said. And it's like, Lord, forgive me. Clean my slate. Now I'm going to go on and try to do better later. We don't hold on to the past. The Bible says forgetting those things which are behind. I press toward the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. You don't have to hold on to the past. And, oh, Lord, I said this to somebody that doesn't work like that. God will clean you up and give you a fresh start. Isaiah actually was upset because when, when God called him to be a to be a prophet, he was like, I dwell in, a, in the midst of people with unclean lips, and I have unclean lips. Jesus, t God touched his mouth and said, behold, your sins are forgiven. Your iniquity is purged. So think of this today as an opportunity to rededicate your life to the Lord and go out and let him use you. God wants to wipe your slate clean and to move on, for you to move on. The next part, he says, be an example in charity. In 1 John, it says that God is love. So that means God is the ultimate expression of love. He is, to be an example of love is to be an example of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we talk about that all the time, the love chapter. And those are characteristics of love, which are characteristics of God. So if you want to be like, if you want to have love, you've got to have God. Even if you, you, you can be the most, the nicest, the most adoring person who's not saved, but you don't have love until you have God. That's right. That's right. So how do, we, how do we care for other people? How do we minister to their needs? That is how we show love. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. Yeah. The exact same thing goes for love. Love without works is dead as well. Because you can tell somebody you love them all day long, but if they can't see it, they're not going to believe it. Love is shown practically. It's not an action. and it's, I mean, It is an action. It's not just warm and fuzzy feelings. That's not how it works. The Bible says to also be an example in spirit. The Bible calls us to be filled with the spirit. Filled with the very spirit, the very presence of God. Because he's the one that will, that will anoint us to go out and to preach and to teach and to bring others to him. The Bible says to be an example of faith. It's, the word faith is mentioned 245 times in the King James Version. Jesus talked about faith so much. He talks about mustard seed faith and how even as long as it's real faith, even if it's this small, it can blossom into a tree. And trees produce seeds, which produce more trees. So your faith doesn't only blossom up and become great on you for you, but it's to produce more seeds, which make more trees, which make more seeds, which make more trees. And it's an ongoing process. And you can plant into someone else's life. The thing about faith is that you also have to be careful where you plant it. Because you, if you plant your faith in the wrong stuff, in the wrong person, if you're not 